landlords, no one doubts the good intentions of a desire to memorialise and to pass on more learning about the Holocaust to new generations. But I have a lot of sympathy with the concern so well articulated by the noble Baroness, Baroness Deitch, and her numerous supporters here today. And I worry that the project is, un is likely to be counterproductive and divisive, as the noble Lord, Lord Black of Brentwood, has just explained. Of course, we can all support learning. But just repeating the word learning does not guarantee learning because education depends on the content of what's being taught. And if this learning centre relativises the Holocaust, then you can count me out. But it's very difficult to have a serious discussion when we don't know what it is we're going to be learning. Yes, we can all agree on the importance especially now, are putting the fight against anti-Semitism and, and Holocaust denial at the heart of our democracy. But to see this as a geographical question rather than a moral one, to think that by placing the Learning Centre and Memorial literally next door to Parliament will solve a problem seems superficial, to say, to say the least, and lacks imagination. So I just wanted to use our imagination and consider what's being envisaged and see if it matches up. As a visitor arriving at this new learning centre, you might assume that it must be at least as impressive as the superb Holocaust collections at the Imperial War Museums, already praised here today. Surely this new venture will or should be a world-class facility, perhaps a comprehensive new museum to help people understand Jewish culture and history, a detailed historic account of the changing forms that Jew hatred has taken, or maybe not, because then we read those dread words, <coughs> high-tech immersive experience. I mean, words that should send a chill down all our spines. Um, this is little more than a grandiose visitor's centre with very limited intellectual depth. And how do I know that? Because each visit is expected to last only 45 minutes. I mean, what an insult. This is a kind of TikTok version of the Holocaust uh, learning experience. And so then we emerge from this underground, fully digital exhibit and face the magnificent site of the non-digital Palace of Westminster. And I suppose this is where I worry about the motivations around the uh, location, because I worry that we're using the parliamentary estate as a prop for a narrative, the creation of an optical link between British democracy and never again. I find it somewhat unsettling that we force visitors' gaze away from the victims of Nazi extermination and shift our gaze Onto, uh, the, uh, par onto our own parliament as though it were a bulwark against anti-Semitism and genocide. This uncomfortably is close to self-congratulatory in tone and I'm usually the kind of person who warns about the fashionable war on the past with, for example, the decolonisation movement insisting on an entirely negative account of British history and accomplishments. However, the antidote to that trend is not to construct a simplistically positive rendition of history. If, the project, if this project wants the public to gaze up at the palace and celebrate the British Parliament um, as a saviour of the Jews in the Second World War, I find that problematic. Because I'm sure we don't want to be accused of spreading historic misinformation by forgetting to mention the many obstacles Parliament put in the way of Jews fleeing fascist Germany or the well-documented virulent and widespread anti-Semitism in the most senior ranks of the civil service at the time and so on and so forth. I think then let's think about today if we're a visitor emerging uh, looking up at Victoria uh, Gardens from the Learning Centre looking to Parliament what should they see if they were being honest? Well, this week, what they would see is a betrayal. British politicians attempting to disarm the Jewish nation after it suffered the worst act of anti-Semitic barbarism since the Holocaust. Or turn the gaze the other way, and I worry politicians look out at Victoria Park Gardens 
um, and, and look at this new memorial if it's built and conclude complacently, we built that. It proves that we're fighting anti-Semitism and what's more, we're now stamping down on the far-right bigotry. So dazzled by its own creation, it turns its, a blind eye to the tens and thousands of progressives carrying placards featuring swastikas defiling symbols of Israel or turns a deaf ear to the ugly pro-jihadist anti-Semitic chants in the Westminster vicinity. There's a lot more to fighting anti-Semitism than props and finding a fitting memorial and a proper way of teaching and learning uh, is, is not contained within this proposal. Uh, my Lord,